Jobbers, countermen, one of the most exciting things about our new system, the Shimmerin 2, is our brand new clear. This clear has the highest gloss, it flows out like glass, it's 44% solids ready to spray. It's an amazing product. It's actually one of the best clears we have ever made. I'm so excited about it. The gloss is 94, 95 unrubbed. I mean, that's unheard of in the refinish industry. It's catalyzed three to one to one with the new KU-152. And make sure you understand that you cannot use the KU-100 or 150 in this product. It must have the KU-152. As before, our standard reducer systems work. In Southern California, it would be the 300 or the 301 reducer to meet the excessive VOCs that's required there. Now, how important is this clear? This clear also has 4.4% UV absorber. That is probably three times plus more than any other clear made. How important is that for longevity? It's number one. When we get a call and someone tells us the candy job or the pearl job is discoloring, the first question we ask is what clear was used? Invariably, it's the clear they had on the shelf. They didn't want to buy an extra clear and put it on the line. For custom painting, this is mandatory. This is a, the most important part of the job because it filters out those rays of the sun and makes that job last five times longer, six times longer than any other clear would ever preserve it. So I think it's the most important ending to every quality paint job. And it builds like crazy, it flows like crazy, it's the easiest clear to buff we have ever made. I don't care if you wait a month to buff it. It cuts and buffs, there is no time limit. You could do it tomorrow, it'll be a hockey puck. Just like our UKK01 that we mixed earlier. Look at this sitting overnight. That's exactly what happens to this clear. It's not one that you can pour the next day. That's telling you the hardness is quick, the flow out is amazing, it's so important. Please make sure that your customers, when they go to House of Color, that they stick with our system and use our clear. Let's mix some up and show you just how easy it is. Okay, we're at the mixing bench and now we're gonna go ahead and mix this up so you can see how simple this is to do. I'd like you to take a look at the cup and what I've done is taken a felt tip marker and made lines on either side of the three to one to one column. And the reason I do that every time is because I have made mistakes. When you look away, you come back and you wind up looking at the wrong mixture levels and then you make a mistake and you can't understand why the job's not drying or why something went wrong because the ratio got changed. All right, so we're gonna mix the minimum amount here. So we're gonna go up to level five with the clear. And be accurate as, as you possibly can, humanly possible. And then we're gonna take some of the KU-152. And again, remember, this is the only catalyst that works in this unit. So now we're going up to the next mark, which gives us our catalyst loading of three to one. And then we bring in the reducer which will finalize the mix and then we'll stir it carefully. Now again, use the reducer that's best suited for your air temperature in your booth. I like to get the fan running for five minutes and then look at the temperature gauge in the booth so you use the right reducer to get the proper flow. Now we bring the reducer in up to the next line and we've got it mixed. And one of the fun things about this clear that you're gonna really, really be impressed with is tomorrow morning, this clear, whatever you had left over, is gonna be a hockey puck. I mean, it's not pourable the next day like many companies' clears are. In other words, we build a hardening factor in there that gets this stuff ready. You could literally polish it the next day. I don't like to polish it right the next day. I like to give it an extra 24-hour dry time, and the reason for that is, is to make sure that it's thoroughly cured and dried down before you bring in the polisher setup. This is now ready to be strained and put in your gun. How many coats do we like? We like a bond coat first, which is like a tack coat. Painters call it a tack coat. Make sure you bring the gun in close to put your tack coat on so that you're using the small platelets. You're not creating an orange peel effect right from the beginning. Give that a five minute set on your timing. Put a timer on your paint bench so you've got some kind of an idea how long you're waiting. We like to see a minimum of eight to 15 minute wait between coats. 
So you're letting the solvents get out before the next coat goes on. The rule is it should be sticky and not string up on your finger. Some say hand slick, which means you can glance a hand over it and it doesn't feel like it's tacky or sticky, but I feel that the, the touch test is as good as anything. Then we put on a full wet coat and set your timer again for 10 minutes. Go in and check it if it looks good all the way around the car. Come in and put your next heavy coat on, 50% pattern overlap, and then you're done for the first day. I really like to color sand the next day and then over reduce a little bit and put on a bond and two more coats with extra reducer and that gives you that perfect, I call it the perfectionist method. So this clear is dynamite. You are going to love it. You've never seen anything like it. Brand new technology. Give it a go.